my mic was off. My mic was off. Yeah. Hi. Um, welcome to today's class. Um, though I'm not feeling very well, we are also broadcasting on our YouTube channel uh, for people who need to catch up with the class. Um, uh, today we are going to be learning about pitching and my tone might be low. So excuse me for that. I've not been feeling quite well after the production. So uh, I hope you're going to uh, bear with me today. Maybe I might not be as jovial as I am. I am usual. And uh, maybe the, my tone, my low tone will be good for you. <laughs> um, so uh, basically, uh, pitching is something that you need to do because it starts actually in the stage where you're pitching for your script. And uh, right now, yes, you might be pitching Mother Rachel, but in future in your life as a professional, and can you guys hear me, please? Uh, I just want to make sure you can hear me. Loud and clear, madam. All right, okay. So yeah, pitching is something you have to continue doing in your life. And uh, you find yourself uh, sometimes getting to the next level of pitching. The last time we had a class, I was teaching you guys about how to do an elevator pitch. Hi, Georgina, I can see you. Uh, thank you for joining in. Georgina, can you do me one big favor? Can you share that link on the group so that uh, the other people who want to join us from YouTube can be able to join? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so yeah, so pitching is something you'll have to do. And sometimes unexpectedly, you find yourself having to go an extra mile to prove yourself worthy to be funded or to prove yourself worthy to receive a partnership. And as we said last time, when you're pitching, you could be pitching to different kinds of people. You could be pitching for someone to join you. And um, in pitching, there's even a lot of agreements that are made. So uh, in the next maybe class, um, not today, but another day, we're also going to learn about how to make a contract that works for you uh, because this is film business. And we said from the beginning that film business actually helps you to uh, become a boss in the film industry. And how to become a boss is by learning some of these life skills, which include pitching. Because when you're pitching, then you, you're able to convince people to work with you. Then you're also able to create jobs for many other people in the industry. And at the, at the same time, if you find yourself pitching a lot, it means that um, you're going to be doing your passion projects, uh, which are going to help you uh, be motivated. Because you, you, that, that means you're doing something that you're really passionate about. And um, so you need to start mastering this skill. I told you guys to come with your notebooks. Do you all have your notebooks? Because today I want you to take notes because I'm going to give you an assignment at the end of this. And if you take notes, it will be good for you. To, it will make your assignment easier. So does everybody have their notebook and pen with them? Because I'm going to be throwing in some things that need to be in your pitch. Uh, and uh, I would expect you to write this down. Yeah. Kachomba, you have your book and pen? Yes, madam. Sure, okay. I have. Okay. Sunday? Yes, I have. Okay, great. So, um, Georgina, I hope you have your notebook and pen uh, so that you, you're able to capture this. The first statement I want you to write on that notebook, in order for you to be pitch perfect, you need to understand that this is a process that takes time. You get better at pitching as you continue pitching. You get better at pitching as you continue pitching. So that's a very important thing uh, you need to write down. So don't put a lot of expectations on yourself uh, when it comes to pitching, just start pitching. You'll get better as, as a teach, and I'll tell you why. I'm trying to do a quick banner. So 
So you get better at pitching as you pitch. That's very, very important because uh, so many people refuse to pitch because they think, okay, I'm not good at pitching. But you think you have to keep teaching yourself. And once you teach yourself, you become better at it. So that's a very important uh, thing for you to note. And once you know that, it's the secret to motivating keep pitching. The second thing, is, um, you know, uh, as you pitch, you need to, to be very much aware that um, you're pitching different types of people and they're going to have these expectations that they have of you. So they're going to be expecting you to do something and um, or to give them some documentation and you can't give any excuses during pitching. You can't say, for instance, I don't have a certificate of tax compliance uh, because if the client has asked for that certificate, that means it is part of their procurement process or part of something in their system so that they, they can pitch. So people have pitched and gotten a million dollars. Others have pitched and gotten $40 million. Uh, so you've got to find value in your pitch that you can give to someone else. And uh, the much value you give and the much proof of value that you have is going to uh, actually make you be able to have a better pitch than someone else. The other thing I want you to write down on your notebook is thousands and millions of people are pitching every day. So you have competition in pitching. It's not only you who's pitching, okay? Uh, thank you, Georgina. I can see that you've shared. Thank you so much. So thousands of people are pitching every day. That means you're competing with thousands and millions of people every day as you pitch your idea. Thousands of people are pitching a film. That's the same thing you'll be pitching. So that means the person you might be pitching to might have been pitched by other many people. So you've got to stand out in your pitch. So that's the second thing I always tell myself. What makes me special with the pitch that I've just done? What makes my pitching special? Because if, you, if your pitch is not special, then somebody is being pitched by 10 people or by 100 people, then they will not consider your pitch. Uh, so remember, you're trying to garner. It's like you're a politician and you're trying to garner votes. So sometimes you'll be pitching one person. And it's more intimidating when you're pitching a board. I have had to pitch the Kiambu County government once in my life. I pitched them with a project and I ended up signing a memorandum of understanding with the county government in Kenya. Now, that's not easy because that's public-private partnership and in, includes a lot of departments, a, a lot of approvals uh, for you to get to that point where you can sign a memorandum of understanding with the government as an individual or as your organization, it takes time. It's a very tedious process. Again, pitching can range from small size pitching to very big size pitching. I'll give you an example. Uh, when I was pitching for the film Village of Kenya, I was pitching for a 40 billion shillings project. Now, when everybody hears 40 billion, uh, the first thing they do is withdraw. They don't want to, to be talking about 40 billion because even that county government, the whole funding they have to take care of hospitals, take care of everything is $5 billion a year. So you can imagine you're asking them their budget uh, for, for, for one year times four or no, times eight. That's what you're asking them. You're mentioning that figure and that is everything they have even to pay all the county salary, people and everything. So you find sometimes you find yourself pitching. Pitching has a magnitude. So you've got to know the magnitude of the project that you want to pitch. How much does it cost? And once you know uh, the project that I want to pitch will cost this much, then you have to find the right people to pitch. You can't be pitching an individual to give you um, 40 billion USD. Um, you know, then you, you have to divide it a bit because for individuals, even if it's Bill Gates, they will be very uh, happy not to give you 40 billion Kenyan shillings. They would rather 
you invest that in a vaccine or in something else. And that's what I said last time. When you're pitching, please always remember that there are always better, better projects for people in their own eyes to invest in. So some people would prefer to actually invest in agriculture, in the sectors that are thriving in the economy, in gas and oil, and other things like those. So again, when you're pitching, it's very important to know that as you're pitching, you know one thing for sure, that there is different magnitudes of people and they, they are looking at investments from different sectors. And so you're competing with other sectors. So don't just say the people I'm pitching are interested in film. Those people are looking at the best place to put their money so that they can be able to actually get a return on the investment. So as we've said, pitching is a life skill. According to me, pitching is a life skill. Whether you will not continue with filmmaking after these classes and maybe you might want to do another business, you still find yourself growing in your business and wanting to pitch. So you should get start getting ready and start getting some skills that can help you be able to pitch. So with that said, I hope now you've been able to understand that actually pitching is a very important component of your life. And now what we're going to be doing is like teaching you today how to do a proper pitch. How are you able to organize yourself and do a proper pitch that even when the client says no, they give you respect for the pitch. And I forgot to say two very important points. One point is that one of the way you learn how to pitch is through the feedback you get from your clients. So when you're pitching a client and they decline your offer, it could be because your quotation is high, or it could be because you didn't have a proper marketing plan, or it could be because you are not addressing the objectives of that organization in case of a grant, or it could be maybe you don't have a proper sustainable project that you're pitching for and they can't see their return on investment. So you need to still keep pitching so that you can learn from your prospective clients as they give you their feedback. Um, and that will help you move forward in your pitching and improve. So you rely a lot on uh, client feedback. And this, the other thing I wanted to say is that there are three answers you'll get in a pitching. One of the answers you'll get in a pitching session is, you'll get a yes, meaning these people will say, we can work with you. And then also you might get an answer in form of a maybe. Maybe means these guys are not decided on whether to say yes or no. They will need more information from you. So you should always be open-minded and ready to hear the feedback of people when they're saying, um, this is the feedback we have. And when they say maybe, that means you have another chance to pitch again. So pitching goes in levels. So you start here, elevator pitching, you get an appointment, you go pitch again, and sometimes you might get a maybe. So you might need to pitch again and again and again to the same client. Again, it requires a lot of patience, it requires a lot of confidence and hard work for you to be able to, to do a proper pitch. Then um, the other one that uh, I want to tell you guys is the fact even as you're you're preparing uh, to go and pitch you can also get an answer in form of a no so sometimes when you're pitching your clients will tell you no so that means they don't want to work with you don't worry about no's because you'll get them that's that's just what it is and it, it's not because it doesn't mean that your pitch was bad Sometimes it could be because you're not thinking with the organization or with the person who is going to, to supposed to finance this. Maybe they don't have the money or maybe they don't have the time to come and help you. Or maybe that's not the kind of project they want to invest in. Maybe they would rather invest in a comedy more than a drama. So again, when you're told no, it doesn't mean that you should give up because you could be told no, but at, this, at the same time, even when they're telling you no, it's because of their issues, not because of your issues. This could be a channel, this could be an embassy, this could be from any perspective of pitching. So those are the things I wanted to let you know before we officially begin this class. So this class is gonna be about
how can you prepare yourself to pitch longer? So as we said last time, first you start by coming up with an elevator pitch, which all of us have an idea of how to come up with an elevator pitch. The main goal of an elevator pitch is to get you another meeting so that now you can present all the other documents. Remember when I was first teaching about film development, I told you guys that there are two packages that you will need for your pitching session. The first package is the creative package. So uh, one of the things that you need to have ready by the time you're going to pitch is your creative package. So can everybody remind me what, what, what are those things that you need to have in your creative package ready so that when you're going to pitch, then if you ask for any of these documents, you have them because we are mixing pitching and supportive documents. So maybe Cosmas, tell me one document that you need to have when you're pitching from the creative package. I need to have, uh, uh, my, my project has to be copyrighted. It needs to, to be copyrighted? Know. Yes. Yes. So you need a script which is copyrighted or a treatment which is copyrighted. Okay, good. Um, Sunday, another document that you may need. You need a, a brief synopsis for them to, to read about the story. Yes, you need a brief synopsis. Um, next, uh, Muteki, what is another thing that you need during pitching? Another creative document that you need, that is a document about your movie. Okay, as, as we wait for Muteki to open her mic, we can talk to Nancyan. Nancyan, which other document do you think we need? And Georgina, you can also type. Nancy Ann? Okay, so um, the other documents that you may need for your pitching include your synopsis, your idea, because your idea is your vision, your treatment, your story outline, depending on who you're pitching to. Uh, all these documents need to be there, your log line. Uh, so you just have to put them together. Actually, when you're pitching, you don't really need the screenplay. The screenplay comes after you've actually been given funding because you're going to keep um, uh, redoing it. And that's why as a producer, if you have the skill of script writing, meaning you're able to develop a couple of these documents and put them together, you can already start pitching for your project. Again, everybody understands that even the development stage requires money. So you could even be pitching for a research on your project. So then you need to pitch your idea and you need to pitch your treatment so that somebody can see what do you need from them. So that is a very important thing for you to, to have. So you need to have your creative package. And that's what you've been developing for the last couple of months. You've been working on developing your creative package. But that's not the only thing you need. You also need your pitching package yeah i can see georgina you've said a log line and that's correct so you also need your pitching package which is what now we are learning today what do you think should be in your pitching package what is the first thing that you think based on the knowledge that i gave you guys last time in terms of you guys learning how to do an elevator pitch uh what are some of the things you think you'll need in your next meeting after you've done an elevator pitch already by the way when you do an elevator pitch and you're able to get a meeting it's one step forward it's like you've already achieved something so it's up to you to destroy it in the next meeting or improve your chances in the next meeting so what do you think you need to have in your pitching package uh, that's Man, the question I'm Sandy? asking. What do you think you need in your pitching package? You yes. need the budget. You need the budget. Sunday? Hmm? You need the budget. You need a budget. You need a budget. That's correct. What else do you need? Hey, guys, am I talking to myself? What else do you need in your pitching package? 
assume that oh. right now you're going to a pitching meeting. You need your budget. What else? Yes. You you need to have everything like uh, documented. Your pitch has to be documented this time. Yes, documented. And what is that? That's what I mean. What is uh, that documentation? The, the likes of the script. Um, no, that, that one is the creative package. You already have that. So what is the documentation you need? That's what I'm asking for the pitching package. Which is this document uh, that you need that has everything that you need to use for your pitching? Do you guys know uh, the name of that document? Uh, no, no, I don't think. No, no, no. Okay, so that is a business plan, right? We've always said film is a product, isn't it? It goes through production. It's a product. You need a business plan. You need to show a couple of things in your business plan to convince people to invest in your business. All right? So today I'm going to be taking you through my methodology. Uh, and uh, before I, I actually explain to you how to come up with a business plan for a film, because, uh, you know, for everyone who's going to be listening to your pitch, they're going to want to see what is what do you want to do with your film? And the business plan could even include uh, could even include that. OK, so we're going to do um this film and we want a grant and we want to show it on youtube we want to reach this kind of people so it doesn't mean that it has to have some financial profits at the end of it depending on who you're pitching so business plan is created mostly using powerpoint um there is an application it's called pitch deck which we really like um let me just see if I can type real quick. It's called a pitch deck presentation. I want you to go check what that is. Because uh, when you're pitching, you, you need to remember that you need to have a pitching timetable. And a pitching timetable is what are you going to present first? Is there going to be time for Q&A with your people? So depending whether they've given you 15 minutes, 40 minutes, or whatever time they've given you, you need to be able to actually um be able to answer to to that yeah so just a minute uh, oh hi bilal uh, hi bilal i'm in class i'll call you back yeah so you need to be able to yes yeah, sorry guys sorry about that yeah so you need to be able to write your business plan and uh, your business plan actually can be in form of a big presentation, which is like a kind of presentation that allows you to put all your ideas into one. And uh, your assignment has to do with this. Your assignment will have to do with you being able to prepare a pitch deck presentation, which I also consider a life skill, because if you're able to prepare this kind of presentation, then you'll be able to talk to people and they'll be able to see visually what you're trying to talk to them about. So that will be a very important document for you to have. Have you captured that, a pitch deck? It's like a type of format of pitching, okay? It doesn't matter whether it's IT, it doesn't matter whether you're pitching for filming, uh, you can use that pitch deck presentation and it will be good for you. Yeah, I'm seeing Georgina that you're saying you need registration document from KFCB. At this point, the only thing you can get from KFCB is a license, but you don't need to get it before you get funded. So you'll get that document later because this is a license when you're making the film. So we're in development stage right now. And in development stage, you've not even, you, you just had an idea and you're trying to make sure that you actually have this idea into a movie. So it will depend on your success in the picture that will determine whether you can actually be able to um, go ahead and be able to uh, even make this movie. 
And so when you decide to make the movie, that's when you'll go for the license, okay? So pitch deck presentation is something that you need to check out. I'll give you some formats, but you can also go online and see a couple of pitch deck presentations. I'm going to come to the presentation techniques at the end of this class, but right now, I just want to talk to you about the content of your business plan, because this is very important. So what's the content that you need to have um, in your business plan? Yes, yeah, so the only thing, Georgina, you need um, in the beginning of this development stage, I'm looking at your comment, is you just need a copyright certificate, which shows um, that you've copyrighted your work. Uh, that is very, very important. And then uh, the other things, you'll get them later. So they, they're never going to ask you for a license right now. But yeah, you could include the fact that you're going to get all these things in your in your, in your your uh, business plan, because in your business plan is what makes sure whether somebody can fund you or not. So I'll come to the qualities of your business uh, plan presentation. And maybe next Saturday, I'll show you now examples of this. I don't want to distort you and make you adapt to my style of pitching. So I just first want to give you the knowledge and then see how you can start developing your pitch deck in your own creativity. Again, there's no one particular formula, but there's a couple of things that you need to answer using your pitch document. And uh, that is your business plan. First, you need to know that uh, your pitching document cannot be very long. So you can write that down. Eh? Your presentation cannot be very long because most people will not give you more than um, 20 minutes for pitching or 20 uh, or 40 minutes maybe for pitching and Q&A. Sometimes what I do with my clients to prepare them psychologically for a long pitching is to actually tell them that, okay, let's do this. I'm going to, to, to require 40 minutes of your time. Can you give me that? They say, no, we can't get 40 minutes. Let's give you 30. So I say, I'm going to create a schedule and then I'm going to tell them I'm going to pitch for 15 minutes, then have 10 minutes of Q&A. And then we're going to have five minutes for closing the deal. So it needs to be organized and you need to look like you respect other people's time. You can't keep pitching and pitching and pitching. You know, there has to be a limitation to your long pitching as well. So you need to know that your document has to be simple. It has to address all the relevant issues uh, that need to be addressed. So I'm going to, to tell you a formula. I learned about this formula from the University of Notre Dame where I was a student learning it's a business entrepreneurship and leadership. And when I went to this, I got to learn from one of the biggest companies in the world, and this is the IBM. And they were teaching us about how to do a proper business plan. And I liked, I liked the, the way that business plan was because it answers every question such that you don't have to miss out on giving some information. So I want to give you five aspects that you need to cover in your business plan. And then I want to see how you do at those five aspects. The first one is called R and D. Let me just show you how it's written. R and D. So you're going to bear with me because I'm producing for myself as I'm teaching research and development. So that's the first stage, uh, which I really like to teach uh, because I think this was an answer to my pitching problems. I never used to know whether for real um, my, my pitch was perfect, you know? And when I started to learn about these five stages of writing a business plan, then I started to understand, first of all, you need to validate the product. So research and development is a stage where you actually begin your presentation by giving facts, by giving facts about your target audience, giving facts about the need for your product, uh, giving facts about what's a problem that you're trying to solve in the market, and then you bring in your product as a solution. And if you've done a prototype, then you actually talk about your prototype. Have you done a small part of your project 
and uh, have you ever have you even been able to call a group of people together to give you feedback on how they would receive your products what they think about your product have you tested your product in the market or are you just coming to sell something because you think it's going to sell so for me i came to realize why these people in the us are getting very big funding for their project is because they really do a lot of research and development. So they have facts to back up the need for their product. And I want us to keep doing some exercises as we are going on. So after this one unit, uh, one uh, topic of research and development, I want us to do a small exercise just to see whether you're getting what research and development is all about. So let me ask you guys, uh, and I'm going to start you off like with a few points. What are the activities that will happen in your research and development? So let's say you're making a movie, let's say an action movie, and you're making this movie in Kenya, and you want to build up on facts about why your movie is important. Uh, what are some of the things that you would want to research on? What, what are some of the things that you'd want to research on so that you can put that in your pitching package so that they can attract the attention of people to come and work with you? So what are some of the things you'd want to research on? Maybe Nachoka, tell me one thing that you'd go and research on in that research and development stage of your product. Well, for me, uh, like you say, like maybe you want to do an action movie in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So you want to research. Mm -hmm. I think the first thing I can do is I can first look at what other people have done in Kenya and outside. Maybe try to see some other action movies. Okay, great. So you research on the type of content eh? that is being made, right? That's one thing you'll do. Okay. Um, Kachomba? Oh yeah, Nachoka, you wanted to say something? Sorry. Well, no, I was just agreeing to. Okay, agreeing. Okay, thanks. Um, Kachomba, what would you say? What would you research in your research and development of of a movie that you're you're preparing for? I had warned you guys that this class is going to be interactive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you did. The, uh... So, um, the movie about company, um, the research that I would do, uh, uh, what, am I, what, what do I want to say? You see, there are a lot of things like um, how certain things can be solved. Like, uh, you see, whatever you do, whether good or bad, it will actually come back to you. Uh, it will be either to your children or to yourself. But in the end, it will still come back to you. So okay. I will do more research on that. On the on the content? That is still on the content. On the content yes. you want. On your yes. story. So you need to research on your story, right? Uh, Georgina, yes. you can be telling us what you'll need to research on. And if there's anybody else watching through YouTube, you should also tell us. Okay, Sunday, what would you research on? I would research on the documentations that will be needed by the by the people I'm pitching to. So that I, ha I have them prior. Um, yes. Okay, so uh, Sunday, I'm even asking this because you are going to put this in your business plan, right? So yes. like a fact, I'm asking this as a fact that you can put in your business plan to mm -hmm. as a rationale for why you're oh. doing your movie. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I, I would do, I would write down uh, and research about my market. What's my market and who's my target audience? Yes. Okay, great. And Georgina is also saying uh, research on market and type of movie you want to shoot yeah so basically you guys are on the right path so that's those are some of the things you research for now let me tell you how we were taught and um it's very great opportunity i wish my mentor was here
from the University of Notre Dame for me to share with you a few of the things, the steps you need to do during your research and development. Remember, many people don't know this information because uh, even I spent so many years in the industry without knowing this information, but it's very important. It's what gives you very nice facts to be able to show in your, in your pitching session. It gives you very, very grounded facts. So the first thing you need to do is tell us what differentiates your product from the other products in the market. So you need to do your research that your product share. How can you know that your product has a market share? You first have to, 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 to have your target market mapping, knowing who is your client. So I'll tell you, we were recently, we were uh, starting a business. We started a business with Femi, another business. And uh, we were sitting on the table and we were brainstorming. Who is our market actually? Because when you don't ask yourself the market question, you're going to have a lot of problem. So we realized that, um, you know, what you were thinking before that we would target studios, like in Hollywood and blah, blah, blah. That is, that, that is a non-known situation for us because there are other companies which have been in the same space for a very long time. And these companies have built a portfolio. These companies have been able to build a very strong portfolio where they've, they've even like done productions, like sort of like Lion King. They've done service production for Lion King and other people. So then who are you to come in without a portfolio and say you want to target the traditional market, which is the theater market? So when I was at the University of Notre Dame, we learned about five market segments. And I want you, I don't know whether you can see this. Let me try. Can you see this circle? I want you guys to draw a circle like this. Can you see it? More, more like a chart, right? Yeah, like a chart. Just draw a circle in your book. All right, done. Okay, everybody has drawn a circle? No, Divide no. That circle in Okay, draw the circle. Yes, yes. You've drawn, eh? Now, in that circle, yes. you see on the top, it's divided into three. So put a line in the middle, like a semicircle, a line in the middle. Have you done that? And then divide it the way it's divided here. You can see in the bottom, it's two, two segments, left and right. And on the up, it's three segments. Have you seen that? Yes. So how many segments that does your each of your circle have? I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Five. Five. Five, two at the Five. bottom, three at the top, right? Yes. Okay, so on, on top of that, on, on top of this circle, write it, perceptual mapping, perceptual map. Perceptual on is top, e, now on the middle. E, the title, the title. It's not oh, the title. The of the circle. Second. We are going to go inside. Yeah, the title. Okay. Perceptual map. Let me type perceptual map for you. I would rather go slow and we get it. Huh? Oh, we need this right. Um, I'm intentionally refusing to show you a, a fabricated perception map because I want you to create your map together, to create your map from scratch. So it's an intentional thing. So don't worry why I'm, I'm not just showing you an example of another perception map because I just want us to create it with you from scratch so you can understand yours. So, um, I 
Are you seeing the perceptual map what? Comment? Yes. You've seen the name perceptual map, not research and development. Have you seen the spelling? Because I want you to go and research on it after this. It's on the comment section. Perceptual map. Just check it on the comment section. You'll be able to see it. Yeah. So that's a very important word. So let's go back to our circle. Inside the circle, this is the circle. I always have a problem with this camera because it's usually. So you see, oh, that that end. It's written high end market. The place where I've zoomed in right now. On top left, right high end market. High? High end. High, high, high end market. Okay. Top left. In the middle, right size market. Hmm? In the middle, middle up, where I'm zooming in now. Right size market. Size market on the right end now here, right performance market. Okay, are we together? Has everybody updated as, as required? Yes, yes, yes. Top yeah. Top, top left is high end market, middle is size market, uh, right on the right uh, top is performance market, right? Then now we are coming to the bottom circle, right traditional market on the left lower end, traditional market. Okay. Have you written it? And on the right, right low end market. At the lower part. Madam, I'm lost. Um, now we are on the lower end of the circle. On the upper end, mm -hmm. your circle had five parts, right? So yes. on the upper side, you wrote high-end market, size market, and performance market in the order which I showed you, right? So yes. uh, we are now on the bottom end. And on the left bottom, it's traditional market. And then on the right side is low-end market. Done. Done. Everybody else is on the same page. Georgina, you can also write in the comment section whether you're on the same page. I just want to make sure everybody also on YouTube is on the same page. And um, they're actually writing those. So have you guys written that? So yes. the document that we are just looking at right now is called a perceptual map. And what you've just filled in in the circle, those are market segments. Write that down, market segments. So what does a market segment do for you? So, so a market segment actually helps you identify your target audience. And uh, as, uh, as opposed to what we see out here, when we look at markets we just like i'm targeting people between this age and this age no first you're targeting a very big market segment and then out of that market segment you'll define it further you'll see your market share in that market segment so all those five parts of that circle are called market segments you can follow my captions also on the comment section 
just to see what I'm mentioning. So what now you're seeing there, the high end market, the size market, all those things are actually called market segments. They help you to identify your market. So remember, I have started by telling you that me and Femi were actually starting a business and we were trying to identify, so I'm doing a case study here. We're trying to identify what is our market segment. So the kind of business we were starting is a film service company. And of course, what research we had to do was first, what are the existing market segments, uh, market, um, market, what are the existing companies that are actually doing this kind of film service business? So that, that was the first thing that we were doing. And we're trying to see what services do those companies offer? So again, I think it was uh, Nachoka and Sunday who said that it would be important to know what productions have been done in the market where you want to sell your work. So you, it's important to always uh, define your customers in relationship to your competitors. So you first have to discuss, and we are doing research and development now. We are trying to see what are the things we need to do. First, we need to identify our market. So guys, let me ask you a question. If you want to get into a particular market and there are already other people in that market, don't you think what you're doing is to steal some market share? Don't you agree with me if I say that? You're trying to steal some market from somebody who's already ex existing. Is, it, yeah. is that true or not? It's true. Yeah. Is it possible for you to say that? Is it mm -hmm. possible for you to say that ah, I'm coming into a new market which has no competitor? Is it possible? No, no, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. So that means you have competition already. In each and everything you're doing, you already have competition. We are in agreement on that. You already have competition. And that's why you need to do a good business plan because that means you just need to know that if I'm doing, let's say, a crime drama, has everybody, anybody ever done a crime drama in my market? And remember, your market is big. Who will make a movie? Kachomba, for example, your movie, where do you want to sell it? The movie that you're making, Kambani. It's Netflix. No, I'm saying, now let's talk about it literally. People from which countries will watch that movie, according to you? I guess everybody. That's uh, Africa and in the western so you want this movie to go to america you want this movie to go to europe right so in yes. so that means you want somebody from europe to watch your movie so even if let's say kambani would be the first genre of its kind in zambia that is the, not the only competition you have right because you want to show this thing to the whole world so you have a lot of competition are we together guys are we together? Yes. Yes. When you're doing the business, you need to smart. And uh, when you're doing a business plan, it means you have to be very, very smart. Very, very smart. Because you need to know what you have, what your competitors have that you don't have. What are your weaknesses and what are your strengths? So I want you to draw a table down there and then I'll define the markets as we are going on, yeah? I'll come back to the circle. So leave the circle alone. So I want you to draw a table and divide it into two parts. One table, just draw uh, like a cross line and divide your table into two parts. Okay. So on the left side, write strengths and on the right side, write weaknesses. On the right, on the left side of your of your book, write strengths, and on the right side, write weaknesses. So you divide into two. So I want to give you a case case study, and as you can see, it's something we actually did for our business. Can you see it? I don't know. Let me try to bring it. Oh Lord, this camera. 
you can see for us guys we were able to map out our weaknesses and our strengths that's how it should look have you done that strengths yes. and weaknesses okay so you have to actually be deliberate in, in as you're pitching be, before you're pitching as you're preparing your business plan you have to be very deliberate in actually uh knowing which questions people might ask you so you have to really understand your market and to understand your market first you have to look at a couple of things let me tell you an example of what we came up with for our company so we were able to say a weakness to us is a strength to our competitor right so we were analyzing our own strengths and weaknesses what is one of our weaknesses that we had one of our weaknesses that we had was we need to build a portfolio because we are just starting our company, right? So we don't have a portfolio of the kind of services that we want to offer because this is the first time we want to offer that service, right? So we took it as our weakness. What is the strength of our competitors? The strength of our competitors in relation to our weakness was that they have portfolio. Don't you think that is a, a strength somebody else has over you? This person has been working in the same industry you want to enter for 10 years. Okay? You're getting my point. Nachoka, you want to say something? Uh, no, I just wanted to respond to your question. Like you yeah. said, don't you? Yeah. So we have a weakness. You wanted to say, yes, that's a weakness, right? because somebody else has been doing the same business for 10 years, they've already gotten clients, their clients trust them, and you want to go and steal from them some market, right? So this guy has a head start over you because already they can show their clients, we've done this and we have delivered, and you don't have anything to show your client, right? Do we agree? Yes, madam. Okay. Next, the other weakness we identified on our side, uh, which was not actually we didn't, it was not a weakness. It was something we dis discovered as our strength in that, that company. It was the fact that actually uh, this point really gave us hope in the business we were trying to start, which is even though we may not have been operating and doing film services for a couple of years, like our competitors, there's something that we have that they also have. So what we identified as our strength is we have a network of industry professionals, of companies, because we've been attending film festivals and all that. And they also have a network. That means, what does that mean in that area? It means that we could easily steal some market from them, isn't it? Because we have networks and they have networks. Or what do you guys think about that? Yeah, yeah, it is. Because when you have network uh, and they have network, then you also, okay, no, you stand a better have, chance. Because, because you have, a, you're at the same point. So you can compete, right? In that front, you can compete to get business based on your networks, right? Yes. Okay, so that one is something we've not noticed. We have, and they have. That's a chance, all right? So the third thing we were looking at, these guys, they price their products highly because of their experience. So we saw that as new people who have come in with no portfolio, we only have networks. Uh, the biggest question we're asking ourselves are we able to price our products highly, yet we don't have experience in the market? Can somebody try to answer that question for us? Would it be a good idea for us to, for us to price our products highly? And this is the first time we are starting. I think no. it can be. No. No. I don't so we realized so. that us guys don't have an option to price our product highly. Depend, it, it doesn't matter the quality that we can deliver because we are starting and we want to attract some clients and they will trust us with more money as we go on. Then we are going to have, we saw an opportunity. 
we said we can look at the law and market because we realized there's some space to steal some market from the law and market because these guys have a lot of experience they are working with studios they are working with all these so we can steal some market from the law end and i'm going to show you how that led us to pick our customer all right so we saw that as our weakness but we saw an opportunity can you write this down it's very important it's possible for you to find an opportunity in your weakness you need to write that down a quote by madam rachel yeah yeah it's possible for you to find a great business opportunity in your weakness by the way so in your weakness you'll still find a great business opportunity all right so again we saw that that low price uh was was the only way we could go all right then we move to the fourth thing you know um the other thing that we saw as as the strength of the other partners is they have connected with service providers because Film service is all about fixing for other people. So these guys have a database of people they work with, so it's easier for them to deliver a project. Us guys are starting, so we are in the stage where we need to build this database, all right? So we saw that as a place where also, in terms of offering quality services, that's a place where we might derail more than our competition. Do you agree with me that yeah, that's correct? Because these guys have let's say they have caterers, they have a list of caterers, they have a list of actors, they have a list of production designers. So when you give them a job to service your production, these guys already have people, they have already negotiated prices. And uh, these negotiations can enable them to actually be able to, 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 to do a job faster than us. Um, so I felt like that was a plus for them and a weakness on our side. Do you agree with that? Sorry, madam, I had lost you for Can a you bit. I don't know what is happening. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Me, I can hear you. I don't know about the others. I, I can hear you now, but I had lost you. I didn't hear the point that you said. Okay. Okay. Saying that um, one thing we realized as well was that the fact that our competitors have built a very good network with their service providers, let's say production designers, actors, and all that. Us guys, because we are starting, we need to start building those relationships. So we are at a point of disadvantage when it comes to actually produce using to our production capacity because we might be given a job and it will take us more time to recruit everyone because we've not be there, been there for 10 years and we don't have this database we are building it all right so have you guys gotten that correct so that's that is another weakness we identified on our side have you gotten that so then what we were saying there's an opportunity in that because of our networks, we are able to actually build these relationships because we've been training students. We have alumni, a wide range of alumni who we could start with to service these productions. We have connections with equipment suppliers and all those things. So we say that's an area where we could lift ourselves slowly and catch up with our competition. So that means there's hope to grow the company within that side. Then, of course, these guys are registered they're registered with all the relevant authorities. Us guys are registering now. So it may take us some time to get some certifications that will allow, allow us to do some types of jobs. So right now we'll be limited to doing a particular kind of job for a particular client until we finish all our registration. Again, we saw that as a weakness. Then of course, um, the thing that we saw our, as our competitive advantage was most of these com companies are actually operating in individual countries. So you find uh, these companies are operating either in Kenya or Kenya and Uganda, Kenya and Tanzania. And us guys, through YFP Africa, we have a network of filmmakers from nine African countries. 
And we're thinking, what if we made our scope nine African countries? That would be the leverage. That means we could get a customer from Zambia. We could send somebody like Cosmas and uh, Nachoka and Michael to just go and take care of it. We could build our networks in Namibia, in Botswana, in other places, and actually be able to send these people. So we saw that as our competitive advantage because we've been able to capture Africa, where these guys, they are focusing very much on just providing their services for a particular context. So let's come back to our circle that we, we drew earlier on. That is our perception map. Now, with that said, I want us to do a quick exercise. And um, I want you guys to go back to the perception map. And I want to talk to you about quickly these five market segments, what they are. And then I want you to tell me, to choose for me, which market segments best fits our business. The business we started with Femi, okay? And each one of you are going to tell me. But before that, I just want to discuss the five market segments that are in that circle that you do. So the first market segment that I told you guys about, it was the traditional market. So traditional market is the market that has actually been there for the people who have been doing this business in the past. Remember when you're doing a film service business, you're targeting other filmmakers from other parts of the world and even from within your country who are doing big productions to ask you to give you a job so that you can give them production services. You can give them transport, you can give them permits, you can give them work permits and anything else they need for their production. So what is the traditional market like for this kind of industry? The traditional market in this industry is international filmmakers who want to come to Zambia, to Kenya, to Uganda, to any other country to actually produce a film. Reason being, no country in Africa allows international filmmakers to come and make a film in our country without having a film service agent. So that has been the biggest market because whenever they want to come and shoot in Kenya, they need to contract a local service company to actually help them to acquire all these things, all right, including a license. So that has been the traditional market. But we went ahead to research to see what, what is that traditional market like? These are people who've been buying these services. And these are, we, we've identified that as internal, international companies, international big studios have, have done movies like Out of Africa, have done movies like Equator in Kenya, for example, have done movies like The White Maasai, uh, a walk with the, the lion. And these are movies all that had a budget, uh, a very good budget. Like all of them were above $1 million and above. So these are good movies and they were produced using a, a good budget in Kenya. But for them to be produced, they had to procure the services of a film service agent. So that's the traditional market. They are used to a particular number of filming agents in Kenya who in their knowledge are experienced, are exposed. They have the cast and crew that can service this. They are able to get them equipment and everything. So I wanted to ask you guys, do you think it's easy to steal market share from a traditional market client? A client who's been using some services for five years, 10 years. Do you think it's easy to steal some market share from them? Hello. Have I gotten you guys lost? That's not an easy thing to do, madam. Okay. Okay. Someone else? I think I think it's possible to steal from a traditional market. Yes. Okay. Tell us your thoughts. It depends on what tell you bring to the table. Can. My why is because it depends what you bring to the table and the offers you give them because you always have to each and every day. So you, just because you've started today yeah. doesn't mean you can't see someone who's been somewhere for 10 years. I believe so. Yeah, but yeah, but uh, actually I like the fact that you brought that point because it helps me explain the traditional market a bit more. 
Nansian, traditional market, it's like, you know, these parents who are used to buying shoes from Bata and they cannot go to anywhere else to buy shoes. Even if you show them very nice shoes in Gikomba, they won't go. Yeah, those are traditional market. Is it easy? I'm not oh. saying it's not possible, but is it easy to steal that kind it's of not, client? It's not easy, but I think it's possible. Exactly. It, the answer is it's not easy, right? But it can yeah. be possible. Sometimes you can steal. So us guys, uh, we were evaluating whether is it possible for us to go to Sony, who have already worked with Blue Sky Films. They know Blue Sky Films can give them this and that and that. They've worked with Pontact. they worked with other people. Or Disney, for example, or other companies that have already worked with other companies in Kenya. Uh, is it easy? So that's a consideration to make because that's a consideration that the person you're pitching to will make to see whether you're being realistic or not. So the traditional market segment is that, it's people who are addicted to being served by a particular brand or things like those. And those guys are the hardest to steal. But yes, as Nancy Ann said, it is possible to steal them sometimes. Secondly, the other market segment is the low end market. What does the low end market entail? These are people who will buy a product just based on the price. How much is it? They don't have money, so they don't even have an option to decide what product, what quality of product they need, all right? So these guys, they just care about money. Who are these guys in, in our context? This could be SMEs, small and medium enterprises who maybe want to do an advert for their social media pages. So these people, they don't care. They don't care about quality, about big budgets. These guys have small money. And these guys could also be independent filmmakers like Kachomba, like Sunday, like Nancyan, like Moteki, like Nachoka, like Georgina. Any one of you is making a film, you want to come and make this film in another country, you'll need a film service agent, right? And one of the things you'll be looking at, what is the lowest price I can get? Because you are young, you don't have that money or that chance to actually be able to pay for big services. So these are low end markets. And uh, when we did our research, we were able to actually understand that this market segment does not have a lot of people serving them. Who, who like, let me ask you guys, who targets poor people in their business? It's the people who do agriculture, right? Do you know that? Those guys target the low end market? Yes, yes, yes. Like the people who sell maize flour or wheat flour, or they sell sweets like Unilever and chocolate. These guys target the low end market. Why do they do that? Because they work with the quantity of people that they will get, and they get a lot of profit. Again, Targeting the low-end market, that does not mean it will reduce your income. In fact, some of the richest people in the world target the low-end market. When you target the low-end market and make little profit per person, you are actually able to get a lot of clients and a lot of consistency and a lot of repeat clients because the economy is getting harsh all around the world with the Russia-Ukraine war. Oil is becoming expensive. Everything is becoming expensive. And everybody is caring about their product. Pro, pro, pocket so yes they need these services but yes they also want the, the services to be pocket friendly and again think of this when you're working with the low-end markets you're able to actually grow with these clients so when you're working with these kind of people like if if you give them like a good commercial or anything then they start growing, they start getting more audiences, they stick to you and become your traditional market. Again, when you're thinking about research and development, it's really going deep and researching what market is really good for your business. Uh, and that's the first, only the first part. So that's the low-end market. These guys care about the price only. They don't even care about quality. If they go to the supermarket, they find one soap is 60, the other one is 50, they'll buy 50. Can I hear in this class, how many people are in the low-end market segment? 
you can say me when you purchase it. I am I, in the low end. You're in the low end, eh? <laughs> even even Moteki said low end. Uh huh. Nachoka, you okay. in the high end? Low end. Low end. Uh huh. Nachoka, I've not seen you saying anything. Okay. Nachoka is quiet. Maybe she's in the another market. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hello. When you're purchasing things, are you in the low end market or do you buy things because of the price or do you buy things because of other reasons? Okay, let's continue. Then maybe we are going to see where Nachoka belongs. Okay, so you find majority of the people right now <laughs> in this class are actually buying. I buy because of, of the, the price. You buy because of the price, right? Everybody here at I'm our age, speaking. we buy because of the price. Yeah, and let me ask you guys. So all of you guys, the way I'm seeing you, you won't be clients of Blue Sky Films, which will charge you millions of shillings to do something. You won't even look at them, right? But if you mm -hmm. had some budget, even if you had like 200,000 Kenyan shillings and you want to shoot, you'd consider a company that, that is not that high up, right? To give you the service because you're trying to save your money, right? So you find more majority of the people in the world are actually in the low end. They, they actually look at things just in terms of price. That's it. Even that goes even into the to the what is it called to the distribution platform like Netflix. Netflix right now, what their strategy is because they have been losing subscribers by the day because the economy is becoming hard. What Netflix have been doing is. They have been giving us, I don't know whether you guys have this in your countries, but in Kenya right now, we have Netflix for free on Android phones because they're trying to reach that market that actually unsubscribed for them because they couldn't afford the price. They're trying to, to drive the platform more towards being free because first of all, there are two costs you incur when you buy Netflix. One is the cost of monthly subscription and two is also the cost of data which becomes choking to many people. And that's how they will start losing subscribers. So they have also started to evolve their business so that they can start reaching this market. So I want to ask like maybe some of the, I don't know, uh, Kachomba, do you guys have free Netflix on Android in your country? Yes, I do have it in my phone. Okay, good. So I know also all of us here in this setup, we, we have this free Netflix. So, how much do you watch the free Netflix now on your phone? Like, mm, how much time do you use watching free Netflix? Whenever I have time. Okay. Like, it's, so, it's easy. Would you rather watch your free Netflix or your TV? Pardon? Would you rather watch your free Netflix or your TV channels from Zambia? uh it's netflix of course because um it's cheaper because uh, tv i have to subscribe and of which i pay a lot of money to watch a few channels then with netflix it just maybe um i will just use uh, um, a little amount of money and i watch a lot of movies great moteki how much time do you spend on free netflix on your phone yeah. I'm just doing uh, the research here. Yeah. A lot, yeah. eh? Yeah. Okay, so that means Netflix was able to target you and capture you guys because you are actually going to get lost from them if they were going to keep it paid, right? So nowadays, even somebody who's paying for Netflix is somebody who has extra money to pay or who wants to watch Netflix on the TV with their whole family. So you find, again, that's another thing. And, uh, you know, when you're doing a business, you need to think about it. The price matters a lot. The price matters a lot. The price of your product. Who are you targeting? So, again, um, you need to know when you're making a movie or whatever you're doing. Are you targeting traditional markets? These are people who go to theaters. 
also are you targeting low end market these are people who just buy movies through unconventional means and they'll try to get entertained at zero price or at the lowest price again it's the same for distribution platforms for other people so again that's something you need to know so this low end in our company uh, case study which we are doing this low end clients to us were SMEs were independent filmmakers like all of you who would want our services to help them in producing so we we saw that this market does not have a lot of companies which were established to actually help them we also saw another opportunity that when you're when you're serving this market there are so many NGOs and so many governments which are also very interested in helping people who were helping young and medium enterprise small and medium um, enterprises so you could have a chance to increase your capital by getting funding uh, to do some some part of that programming and subsidizing that cost for your target audience again we saw that something that goes well with us because we are very much driven we have a balance it's, it's like a social enterprise it's not a full enterprise so we are not all in need for money we are also all in need to make impact again so you're able to see that 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 to us that's what that market meant at that time then performance market so in the performance market these are people who care about quality so what is what is um this market that cares about quality they, they they are willing to pay any price for the quality but there's some people in the low end market who would also love it if you give them quality then there's some people in the high end market who pay a high price for a product for example iphone or apple uh, so that they can get performance so there's a market in the in in the world that really wants to see quality and i'll give you an example of of a low end market um, in terms of films. I don't know how many of you, if all of us have actually exposure to Nigerian films. The Nigerian films started, they started as really low end. They were not color graded. Um, they had very weird sound effects. And yet the industry was able to grow because these guys just targeted you know, the low end market. But then when they, they were targeting the low end market, they started realizing that there's some people in the diaspora who really like to see the face of Africa. And those guys value a bit more of quality, even if they have to pay a little bit more for it. So this is the performance market. There's also performance market. So you could combine, let's say, traditional market, low-end market, and performance market, and say this is our target market segment. Or you could, could combine low-end market and performance market to see how to leverage your product in the market. Now, size market, these are people who just buy particular sizes of things. For instance, many people who buy an iPhone, they buy an iPhone because it's small, but it's powerful. Some people also like big phones. Some people like short films. Some people like um, uh, feature films. Some people like longer feature films, and others just like moderate uh, feature film. So there's some people who just look at how many hours is this movie? One hour. Ah, I'm not going to watch it. How many hours is this movie? Is it three hours? Oh, this looks like something good. Uh, some people will say, I prefer a series of a movie because a movie ends so fast. Uh, there are people who will say different things because those guys are in the size market. Okay. And then high end market. These are people who take nothing but the best and most trending thing in the world right now. These are people who will only buy a handbag from Versace, okay? They'll buy eyeglasses and they'll get designer eyeglasses. They'll buy the most expensive bottle of wine or champagne or whatever. When they're buying a house, they'll buy the most stylish houses. So these guys, to them, they don't care about the price. They have the money. But how many guys like this do we have in the world? That's the big question you need to ask yourself. In this world, those people would make up for like 20% or 30%. Again, is this a bad market segment to target? No, not at all. Because companies like Apple have targeted these people for a long time and they have had customers and they've been among the most profitable people in the world. So 
again, it doesn't mean that targeting any of these market segments is wrong. So guys, I want you to look at these uh, things that I've given you and uh, tell me, I'm giving you a minute as I take some glass of juice. I'm giving you a minute to choose a target market and give me a reason why uh, which market segments our company, based on our strengths and weaknesses, for me and Femi's company, which target market segments do you think we can try to target as we begin this business? Let me know. And just to add one point, um, when you want to target the high-end market, you've got to increase your innovation budget, all right? Because you have to bring something new. You have to be Elon Muskish, or you have to come with something new. Like when Apple, when Steve Jobs came up with Apple products, he came up with Apple products and they were different. He came up with a product that people didn't know was there. So he's put a lot of budget in innovation. So if you're coming up with a product that is like any other product, uh, for you to price it highly, then there has to be some element of innovation in that. I'll give you an example of a high budget movie uh, that had a lot of innovation, and that's Avatar. They created the, the motion capture. It had its special camera. It had a special technology used to make Avatar movie. It was not animation. It was not normal. It was not what was normal. So somebody would want to finance that because there's an innovation, there's a prototype of a new thing that will be introduced in the market. Again, that's something very important for you to note. So I uh, want to give you one minute from now. I uh, want you to tell me what uh, market segments do you think the company we've been focusing on today um, should actually take. And then I'm going to come and finalize on that part yeah so one minute guys Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, who has uh, the first, who wants to take the first go at uh, the market? I've seen um, Georgina is saying low end market. Okay. Okay. Um, I would go for high end market. High end market? Why? Why would you go for high end market? Because um, I want to create something which is of high quality. Because uh, I guess even as much as uh, people are watching movies, they want to to get everything, like the quality. Because so most Chumba, people... I are... I'm asking you based I'm on our company, on company. with the family. And with the weaknesses we saw in the strength. And I want to remind you that one of the weaknesses we saw before was we don't have a portfolio. And two, and two, I'm saying I want to remind you the weaknesses that we saw. Okay. Can you, can you mute your mic and tell you and then you come back? Okay, so I want to remind you that the strengths and weaknesses we saw in our company, one of it 
we saw that our company has to build a portfolio. Uh, and also we saw that these guys who are there are already charging a high price because they have a portfolio. And as guys, we saw that we don't have the option to charge a high price. Therefore, why should we choose the high-end market? Yet it won't work for our business. We already know that we can't do that at this point in our company. Tachomba, can you answer that question? Um, I guess in that case, hmm. it's the low-end market. Okay, so it's the low-end market. Because we don't have a choice. Like we would all want to go to we would all want to go to the high-end market, definitely. But we are starting the business and that segment is out of bounds for us because first we don't even have capital to innovate and bring something new to the market. We want to build business, then reach to that point where we can offer a wide range of services. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, Kachomba, I hope you've seen that you know you don't make your decisions based on what you want, but based on the facts on the ground about you and your competitors. I hope you've gotten that point. Sure, Amanda, I have. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Sunday. Uh, I would say low, low end market, and also if you. Okay, locally, I would say low end because most uh, Kenyan and okay, African homesteads are at low level, are low end market. But if you say if we are saying you're selling globally, like let's say you also want to go to other countries, like you're selling to other festivals like Kane, I would say the performing the performing market. Yes. Okay. So. Um, Sunday, you've given a good explanation, but it's not complete. Uh, I'll tell you why when I listen to the other people. I'm, I'm hearing, uh, Georgina, you're saying low end market and performance market. Sunday, you've said low end or performance. You've said low end or, or low end and. I said low end and performance for global. Okay, great, great. Nancy Ann? I would say low end market and size market. Okay, why? Uh, low end, it's because you be, you are working with a minimal budget, which has to be a bit pocket friendly to the investor and those you're investing with. Then the size market, it depends on the size, like according to the taste. You know, you cannot give someone something that is not good to their eyes. Like for us, maybe for the Afro, you know, uh, for us, the African market, we haven't really uh, embraced the this market for, for what is it called? Is it a year war <laughs> crimes? So we love these other things where we see wicked mothers, yeah. wicked daughters, something like that. But we haven't taken up the action. So I would say that with the size market and the low end market. Okay, thank you. Uh, you've also missed out on something, but I'm going to tell you what. Actually, no one has gotten the whole market right at the moment, but let me hear the rest. Uh, Nachoka, what market? Uh, Moteki, let's go to Moteki and then you come to Nachoka. Moteki, which market would you pick for our company? Uh, I would say low end market and size market. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Why? Uh, low end market because you're still starting out and you haven't built your portfolio yet, and you have a limited budget to work for to work with. And size budget, size budget, size market, sorry, um, so that you can because of the <laughs> I don't know how to explain. Okay, okay. Thank you. Nachoka? Nachoka, which market um, segment would you choose for us, yeah, for our company? I think I can choose performance and mm -hmm. traditional. 
Okay, so I'm interested yeah, to hear why man. traditional. Um, why traditional? Because um, there are people that are already doing that, so you have to link it with a performance, so you can bring out quality in order to get the attention of those people. Okay, but traditional market we said is for those people who have used services of other people. Where would they want to use our service? Yeah, so that's how I said you can link it with performance market. So they would want to use your services because you want to bring out quality compared to what they've already seen. But how do you convince this person that you'll bring out quality when you don't have a portfolio? Uh, because it will be based on word of this? mouth. Oh yeah, word of mouth, not the content yet. So that means these people wouldn't trust you. Because these people want to see, yeah? They want to see what is it, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you, guys. I'm um, seeing Georgina is writing. Because in as much as you go for low market, you also want to give quality at the same time. So, guys, um, I, I'm just loving the way this exercise is going because at least I hope it's making you understand how to make this decisions. So let me tell you how we make our decision. First of all, we looked at what does YFP have in its hand. Already we have Femi, we have Sebastian, we have all these people around the world. Remember, when I was talking about our strengths, one of our strengths that I said is networking. So we already have crew and cast from all around the world. So what does that give to us? It gives us performance. Do you guys agree with me? We already have capacity to perform. And we have portfolios. All these people already have work. You get my point? So, like, because of our networks, uh, we're able to guarantee whether we're going to pick low-end markets or high-end market, we are able to guarantee performance. So, the people we work with are actually very, very qualified, and uh, they are our good friends. They are also starting up, but they're talented. So, they have these equipments, like what we did for wounds and everything. So they're easily able to perform. So performance is already a guarantee that you're giving. Then secondly, we want to venture into this low market, low end market, because they, we've realized it's the easiest place to start to build our portfolio. Why? Because these people don't even have many people considering them. So there's a very huge market without a lot of competition that would be very happy to pay a low price but get quality. Uh, and uh, this market has the capability of growing businesses, which uh, goes again to our core values where we want to, to do social enterprise instead of just doing enterprise, where we also want to impact lives in the process. So we are able to work with these guys and help them grow their businesses. So again, that is the low-end market. So you're helping someone to get visibility. Again, again, size market, we are able to do big things because we are filmmakers, we're able to do feature and we're able to do short films, we're able to do adverts, we're able to do music videos because we are on the low end market and this is these are the services that these guys need. So according to our clientele, we can be able to target comfortably three of those marketing segments. The only marketing segment we cannot be able to target is the high end, we don't have innovation. We don't have a budget for an innovation. You hear me, guys? It's like I'm seeing like the network is lost. Can you hear me, guys? I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. So, um, okay. So, uh, the only be able to target is low end market, performance market, and size market based on the resources we have on our hands, right? In future, we would want to target, we would want to innovate. But right now, we are the beginning. We are building a portfolio. So we would uh, say, no, thank you for that. Then also, we would not want to venture into the traditional market because that means we have to comp compete with giants who have invested, who have built a relationship with these guys and studios and all that, which is something we need to compete with when we with time, 
when we build our portfolio and we have something to show about our performance. So with that example, I hope you guys have been able to get the first step of market segmentation. So once you, you're able to define your market, and then that is market segmentation that you want to steal into, this is some information that you will research and put down on the first slide of your PowerPoint presentation. That is your business plan. And once you're able to put that, and uh, as we were talking earlier, what we are saying is the first stage, and there are five stages. So first stage of what you should include in your business plan. And we say you should include in your business plan, plan for research and development. Research and development is that. And Can you guys hear me? Sorry, I lost my network for a while. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay, so what we are saying is um, that's the first stage, the first thing you need to research in your research and development, which is uh, you need to research your audience, identify your market segment, then you can even go further and define it. Uh, further, but what what the investor wants to know is whether you know your market segmentation right. Secondly, you need to research about your product, and uh, because now, do you? Uh, I wanted to ask you guys a question: Is it possible for you to make a product before you know your target audience? Is it supposed to be you make the product, then you know your target audience, or you make a product? for your target audience. What is it supposed to? I think you first make your, your, you know your audience, then you know what products to deliver. Yeah, exactly. So now that you have identified your audience, it's very easy for you to go in the development of your products. And when you, you go in the development of your products, you're able to create a product that will entice the target market that you're doing. So again, so your product is created out of the need. For instance, let me give you an example of how I would give a justification for the company we just started. I would say that uh, we realized in our research that there are not many companies which actually take care of SMEs and independent filmmakers in that service space. So we saw a gap and we are here to fill in that gap and to reach out to these people. And we are not only going to give them quality, we are also going to give them the lowest price for the product, and we're also going to be diverse in the sizes of products we can produce. Is that enticing? Is that enticing when you hear the problem, when you hear the gap? Yes. So it's enticing. Has it attracted you to want to work with us, especially because you're, you're the kind of customer we are targeting? Would you want to work with us if we told you that we identified this gap that no one is targeting you? No one is targeting to help you achieve your production. And we mentioned the word that we are going to give you this at the lowest quality, at, at, at the highest quality, but at the lowest price possible. Is that attractive about the product? So in your business plan, you need to give information about why your product what is the problem that you have identified and what are you solving? That needs to be in your research and development. That's two. Number three, um, so guys, are we together? Can someone remind me the first one? You map your target audience and then? 
research your product research your product so you map your target audience uh using the perceptual map keep that uh, somewhere very safe that map so you map your target uh, target audience using the market segmentation and the perceptual map secondly once you know your audience you develop your product right develop your product for the market thirdly you you find out uh what is the advantage of giving that product to your market what is the gap you identify that gap that you're feeling so your data in your research and development should be able to identify the gap that your product is feeling and this is cross education you can even start and you find yourself starting other businesses and this will be like a cross education this this class is life skills more so you identify the gap this is very very important identify the gap and once you identify the gap, uh, find your leverage what's your what 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 is it that you're bringing in that is fresh and once you find your you write all that not in more than two powerpoint slides so make sure that you represent it and that's why for me i prefer using diagrams i said i'm going to talk to you a bit about how presentation techniques um, in the business plan so for, for me what i do i try to use diagrams i try to use pictures uh, to represent my product so uh, uh, for instance, Chomba, what is the product you're pitching? Your product is a long movie, a long feature film. Uh, what, what gap did you see in the market to, to make you want to make the story of Kambani? And uh, who are you targeting with that story and advantage of your product? Yeah, we are going to give highest quality because we have one, two, three and we are going to give it at the lowest price so you have a chance to produce this movie but at, at the lowest price with us depending on which market segment again you've chosen and then identify the gap and tell us the leverage what advantage do you have remember our leverage in our company that we identified was the fact that um us guys are targeting more african countries we built a network of africa so we are able to work with people and offer these services to SMEs in nine African countries. So I think that to us was our leverage because these companies that are there, even if they are very experienced, they're just based in Kenya or in Uganda or in Rwanda. They're just in one country. And us guys are going to now to give somebody the opportunity to even shoot in six countries or the nine countries that we are representing in our film service through our wide range of networks. So what's your leverage? What is it that you're giving your clients that other competitors are not giving? And that, ladies and gentlemen, marks my end of the first two pages of your business plan, which should include your research and development. I would say, if you add another page, it should be just for rationale. Just uh, rationale um, is basic facts in the industry. Uh, that may be about genre or about things, you can add that as your introduction. You can say, did you know that, uh, For let me give you an example. You'd say like, did you know that in Nigeria, film is the second contrib biggest contributor to the economy? Film is capable of actually contributing to the social economic development of a country. And you start to give a quick leverage in like five points or six in your, slide number one and then now come to this is this statistics inspired us to see what kind of a product can we create for market that does not exist so we've identified a market which is underserved da -da 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 -da. we've seen a gap here and here and then we came up with this product and this product will help us have this leverage now there's a fifth thing that you can have that I'm very proud to say that we now have for Woods and Sebastian also has for his movie, Blessed by Sunlight, which is a teaser. Now, what is a teaser? A teaser is a prototype. We've actually created the product, a sample of that product, and we can show you how it looks like. 
that is something that you can also include in your research and development. We created this product, the teaser. We've shown it to a couple of people. We've gotten their feedback and we, we wanted to know whether they love it or they hate it. And we saw that we can continue improving on the way we are going to execute this movie. So a teaser really helps because it's something you can show people apart from showing to the sponsors and everybody, something you can show people and actually be able to validate your target market want this product. Confirm to someone that your target market already are in love with the trailer of your movie. And you're able to show that. You're able to show their comments. You're able to show what they think. And that will help you to get people on board to work with you. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed this class. And um, now I'm going to open the floor for questions. And I also want to also ask you guys to give me your takeaways. Next time when we come back to this class next week, where we're going to be continuing with this pitching, and I think I've given you university PhD quality training on this. Uh, because I know this is not something you learn in a normal school. And if any one of you has learned something like this somewhere, even just had the word R&D and started working on it in a film class, please, you can let me know. This is very important, very high-end knowledge I've just given you today. And I always believe the quality of a man or woman you become is based on how intelligent you are how deliberate you are and how strategic you are at making every decision. Remember, if the foundation of your business is wrong, it will never be right. If the foundation of anything was wrong, it will never be right. So you have to start right. You have to follow a process. You have to know that this film business is a very risky business. And sometimes those who go with the heart just like in the marriage, when you just go with the heart without using your head, you will fail. You, at some point, you need to use logic reasoning, you know, in doing these things. Look at the foundation of what you started. How is the foundation? If the foundation is not rooted right, you didn't do research, you're just assuming things. That's the same way you're going to be surprised every time you're going with your product to the market because you don't even understand. Where am I selling to this person? Who should they be selling to? So the more you jump processes in film business, the more you burn your fingers. But the more you keep following these processes, the more you become respected, the more you become a boss in the industry, and the more you actually know your value and self-discover, and the more you're going to deliver more quality projects because when you have money and you have support that you need you're able to deliver higher quality products to your market so that's very very important so i want to uh to let you know that and um i'll give you an assignment for after this class i just want you to pick your movie idea that you're you're going to be presenting in YFP Africa class. I know in our Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday classes, we've been focusing a lot on the creative package. And I want us to start balancing that with the business package so that by the time we get to the pitching session, we already have. I know you wrote your pitch, guys. You remember the pitch you wrote? I want you to go back to that elevator pitch you wrote. All right? Now base it on the project that you're actually going to do for the YFP Africa class uh, 2022 on your idea. And come to me with a map of target audience. What is your target audience? And then tell us some little research on your products. Uh, tell us what problem you're fixing. That is the gap. And then tell us what's the leverage you're giving us. And then tell us uh, whether you have a prototype or not. If you don't have, it's okay. And the first page, you can start with a rationale. You can start with data about the industry and the, the place where you want to do this. And um, so I just want to see like six slides. On the slide number one, it will be rationale. And then slide number two, it will be target market segmentation. Slide number three, it will be about your product. Target number four, it will be about identifying the gap. And target number five, it will be about 
the leverage that your product has. When you're able to do that, I'll be very happy to see that you're starting your PowerPoint presentation or your business plan presentation. You're starting it as a winner already. When you start it like this, nobody's going to stop you in the middle. Everybody will be interested to hear what you're saying. So I hope, hope I've been able to simplify it. I know sometimes I have the tendency of going so deep into something, but I hope with the exercises we've done, you've been able to understand through the case study how to go about it and how to think, because this is CEO staff. So as it now, as you're sitting here, you're a CEO. If you're engaging in market segmentation, you're, you're engaging in founding a business, you're a CEO. So at this point, you're taking the position of CEO of your production. Yeah, clap for yourselves. Yeah, that's what you are doing. You're the decision maker. You're making decisions for your business. So I, yeah. So let's go to takeaways. I'm going to start with you. Nancy, yes, I had a question. Yes, I had a question. Nancy, yeah. no, I have a question. Yeah. First, first, first okay. slide. First slide. Ma. I can't hear you. Rationale. Rationale. Those are the facts. Thank you. Um, let me type it. Yeah, rationale. Uh, Nachoka, you had a question? Yeah, I also wanted to you to ask just you to get back to the slides. Okay, so it's the rational slide number one. Then the second slide number two is uh rational, eh? And then perceptual map, not market segmentation, you can call it whatever you want to call it. So rational, let me just write the spelling of rational so that you can it's on the comment section. You can see it. I've written it in the comment section. If you look at the right side of your screen, in the comment section, you're able to see the word rationale. So that's one. Number two, uh, I hope you'll be able to come up with, the, develop your uh, target audience, market seg seg segmentation and explain it, like the way we were explaining that we looked into the five markets and we saw where our business will be. So for your movie, where is the target? Number three, what number four, um, leverage. What is the leverage? Uh, no, sorry, yeah, leverage. You have disappeared a bit, so we need here number three. Okay, let me start with number one. Number one, rationale. Okay, number two, market segmentation. Number three, identify things to do with your products. What uh, tell us about your products uh, that you're developing? Um, tell us the gap, the gap that you saw that made you create that product. That's number four. Number five, tell us about what leverage leverage does your product have. What do you have as a leverage? What gives you a higher hand over your competitors in doing this product? And number six, talk to us whether you have a prototype or you have a plan of developing a prototype. A prototype is like a practical thing to test the market. Uh, that is a teaser or something that you can create to show uh, your market and get their feedback so that you can see whether this thing actually works for them. That's one of the things we are doing with the teasers for wounds as well, uh, because it's going to help us a lot to see whether we're in the right motion as we are going to uh, lock this deal. Yeah, so basically, I think um, that's what I want. And they can be in, in six different slides. Later on, we'll compress them to three slides. But, you know, you need more information to reduce into small information in, in form of bullet points that you can be able to show. Also, in the process, I want you to research how to do a good pitch deck presentation. Pitch deck presentation. So I want you to look at that. I had written the word pitch deck on the comment. Uh, maybe you can check uh, later on. I think I'd written at some point. Yeah, it's here. Let me just uh, project it. Yeah, pitch deck presentation. 
So you can also research on the techniques of how to put these words in a very interesting way that somebody is going to enjoy looking at it. Have you seen the word pitch deck? Yeah, it's on the comment section also on YouTube. So that will be really good for you. Yeah, that one pitch deck presentation. So the way to do a good pitch deck presentation so that uh, it's interesting and it portrays you in a good image. Anyway, no worries because the next class we are doing this today is about communication. And uh, I have my reasons for doing that class in the mid morning, which is gonna also teach you how to communicate, how to speak your idea, how to brand yourself so that by the time you're going to pitch your good, and so that's another life skill. I know it's unit number eight in uh, in your timetable if you look at it, but I felt like since you're pitching, I would like this pitching competition of this year to be so professional from the, the way you dress to the way you talk about your idea to everything. Because I want you to start manifesting being a CEO now in class. Because if you don't, you'll never manifest it when you go outside. So that's why we are mixing this class and the communication class so that, and uh, of course we are mixing this with the script writing class. So you're preparing your creative package, then you know how to pitch, elevator pitch, and then you know now how to make the bigger pitch. So next time in next class for next Saturday, we're going to continue with making a, a long pitch. So remember, we just have done like two to three pages of our business plan. So we're going to move further and look at the next one, marketing projection, then we're going to look at the other topic, which is uh, production, looking at capacity and everything. And then we're going to go to financing and human resource. So we're going to look at those four segments uh, to bring them together with the research and development that's gonna make you have a great business plan. And uh, what I'm doing in this class is trying to give you this class as a life skill so that as you think of it, don't just think about a movie. A movie is just a product like any other product. This can apply to any other business that you want to do in your life and can help you get the confidence you need and get the deals that you need done. So we still a long way to go because we've just covered one part of writing a business plan. So once you're good with that, which you're going to practice during the week, those presentations, I'll be listening to them on from Monday and then I'll listen to them again on Wednesday and Thursday, and I know by then you'll be feeling very confident with those because this is a very practical class. And then now we can move to the next stage. We experiment and do this, make mistakes and correct so that by the time you're coming to pitch, you're speaking until somebody can ask you which school did you go to or how much experience do you have? But it's because you've learned the right things. So I'm very proud of all of you who attended this class. There's nothing better than attending a class in person because you're able to engage in some of these exercises. Can you imagine somebody will come and watch this class later? Sometimes they'll have lost a lot of very important information, especially the in-class exercises. So that's why it's always good for you to spare some time and attend the class. I also saw Sally that you are there on YouTube on and off. So guys, I just want to hear your main takeaways so that I can take a quick break and prepare for the next class because I'm also not feeling well. But I hope I've been able to try and bring some positive vibes in the class, even with my low energy. Thank you very much. I'll start with you, Moteki. Tell us your main takeaway in this class. Moteki? Um, yeah. Yeah, your main takeaway. I've learned about the structures and how to. I've about the market structures and um, pick which market you're going to target. This, um, like realistically speaking, instead of like what your heart is saying, so that you can build. Yeah, thank you. Great. Thank you for sharing with us. Nachoka, what was uh, your main takeaway in this? Yeah, so on my side, uh, this class has really been helpful because these are skills that we actually perform each and every day, even in other businesses, aside from filmmaking. So I really learned a lot 
yeah, it's now making sense from the things that we've been doing before. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your main takeaway, Nancy Ann. My main takeaway today was um, the types of markets we have, the the markets that we have, how to come up with a how to identify your audience, how to write a business plan, those kind of things have really helped us a lot. Thank you. Great. Uh, next is Sunday. Thank you for sharing, Nancy Ann. Sunday. Hi, everyone. Uh, what I've learned today. <laughs> Um, the new thing I've come to is about market segmentation. I think that you have to segment your market so that you can be able to. Hello, Sunday, it's like we're losing you. Oh, can you hear me now? Hello? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, we're hearing you now. So, I've yeah. learned about market segmentation that you're supposed to segment your market in order to understand it even better. Um, I've learned that you, uh, when you go for a, for a pitching, um, you need to stand out so that the, you can be able to be chosen. You need to know your budget. You need to know what uh, what the the leverage to your product so that it can be easier to sell to to the people you are pitching to. Yes, that's what I've been able to capture. Okay, thank you very much. I hope, Georgina, you can be able to type for us your main takeaway before we leave. Kachomba, thank you for sharing Sunday. Thank you. Uh, Kachomba, what's your main takeaway? Oh, I think I saw something in the chat. Oh, let me see. Uh, yeah, so Kachomba says, uh, my main takeaway is that you need to identify your target market audience before making your product. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I think, uh, uh, Georgina, you'll type your main takeaway and we can all read it later. Have you guys enjoyed the class? I hope you've enjoyed. I've also really enjoyed myself. So Hi. thank you for showing up. <laughs> yeah. So take care. I'll see you at 11.30 for the next class. I think, I think I'll make it 11.45 because I need a small break. I've been talking for a long time. I think I'll make it 12, actually, uh, for the communication skills class. So see you soon, and bye-bye, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Sorry, I'm unable to talk where I am. Yeah, bye. Trying to end this broadcast.